Oh, lookity look, the popo. Oh, uh. Well, I'm glad he got you, buddy, because if he didn't, that might have been me. What up, YouTube? Two balls per bike. Uh, today I wanted to do a video about Smitzy. Uh, it comes from our brothers in the UK and it stands for Sorry Mate, I Didn't See You. But the UK does, or at least did, a pretty good job of uh, publicizing, you know, the fact that motorcycles are out there and they're hard to see and pay attention, you know, double check, look for the motorcycle. Uh, they used to have ads on the, on the television and such. I'm not sure if they do anymore, but um, in North America, certainly we do uh, a lot less of a job about it, uh, advertising it and making it well known to, to cagers that bikes are out there. Um, so I thought I'd uh, do a video for, you know, I guess, oh, that was fucking nice. I guess it's going to help our, uh, our newer riders in, uh, in the U.S. and Canada, hopefully. All right, so there's two, generally speaking, factors that cause smidzy. Uh, one of them is called inattentional blindness. Inattentional blindness. So, you know, basically not really paying attention. And the verbiage behind it goes something like the inability to see the unexpected even when it's right in plain sight. And I guess the best way to equate that to daily driving is uh, conditioning. And I suppose I'll pick that up after the red light. All right, so by conditioning, I'm talking about, you know, as a cager, daily cager driver, you kind of get used to pulling up at a, you know, at a street there, having a quick look left and right. You don't see what you expect to see, which is over time you're conditioned to see big objects like a car or a truck. And so your brain doesn't really necessarily notice the small edge of object like a motorcycle and therefore it tells you, hey, we're good to go, let's go. You carry out into traffic and blammo, you got a smidgy. All right, so the other factor is motion camouflage. The concept there is that you can't tell that there's an object approaching or that it's in motion, even though it actually is. There's a couple of factors that can break that motion camouflage effect. Uh, this stuff's good to know. Uh, because, uh, you know, if it's happening, you think it's happening, you should know what, how it, what causes it so you can, you know, kind of undo that effect. So the first thing is angles, right? So, you know, a bike is thin, unlike a car, it's thin. So if you can create some angles, then you have a bit more profile and it's obviously easier to see you. So angles is one thing that can help mitigate the effect of motion camouflage. And again, I'll pick up the other thing after the red light. All right, so the other thing that can break motion camouflage is looming. And looming is the concept of that as things get closer to you, they get bigger. And I think the ratio is something along the lines of every time the object halves its distance between it and you, it doubles in size. I mean, for a car or a truck, you know, uh, that halving of distance or the increase in size of the object as it gets closer, I think it's a more steady increase. Uh, you know, as it slowly gets closer, it slowly gets bigger. Whereas with a bike, because of the thin profile, it's not like that. It's actually a very slowly coming, even though it's coming, it's slowly getting bigger. And at the last second, it gets really big, really fast. And that's what kind of catches cagers out, right? They're pulling out the driveway. They see this bike all of a sudden gets huge at the last second. They freeze like a deer in the headlights, jam on the brake. And that's your smidzy, right? The bike ends up plowing into them. So, having explained all that, 
there's a couple of things that a um, bike can do to break the motion camouflage if you think it's happening and probably one of the best ways to do it is to weave in your lane because you're creating a bit of angle right when you do that now there's a bit of controversy around that at least in North America because that could potentially get you a traffic ticket because weaving in your lane is not legal but you could you know shift from say I'm in a left tire track now I could shift from left tire track to right tire track and back that's not really weaving and I'm sure you'd get away with that with an explanation so if you see a cager ahead and you think hey uh, Look at that, he's starting to kind of roll out, and I, I have a feeling he's going to come all the way out. You know, shift to the other tire track and back, and, and hopefully that'll create some angles and uh, break the looming effect that bikes have, and uh, motion camouflage, and uh, hopefully he'll see you and stop. Anyway, I just thought about uh, making this vid because uh, that, that incident in uh, Random Ass Hatch 3, uh, I didn't bothered to try the uh, the old change lane there or change tire track lane position and if I did uh, I'm wondering if she would have saw me and it would have been less of an incident I think she had the inattentional blindness right she's used to seeing something big has it looked down because she was in that lane a long time man and I was coming and she didn't see me so obviously the motion camouflage played a part and probably as well as the inattentional blindness so I thought I'd make the vid post it up hopefully it helps some new guys keep that stuff in mind guys and stay safe. Thanks for watching YouTube. Talk to you later.